In this lesson, we investigate how the algorithms, methods, and data structures that we've studied in this course so far can be used to automatically create electronic navigational charts, ENC in short. As can be seen here, these ENC depict the morphology of the seabed with ISO contours, but also with specific points called spot soundings. This lesson is different from the other ones in this course because, firstly, the Z value is not the elevation anymore, but rather the depth under the sea surface. And secondly, because we have a look at a specific use case where several other lessons are used. For example, we use the Delaunay triangulation, the Warner diagram, the concept of contour, contouring, the slope. Uh, we use all of them, we modify them a bit, and then we chain them together to build a workflow that will allow us to extract automatically one specific aspect of these ENC, the ISO contours. Let's first have a look at how bathymetric datasets are typically collected nowadays. Unsurprisingly, we use boats, and these boats have uh, multi-beam eco-sounder sensors attached under them. A multi-beam eco-sounder is a type of sonar, and as is the case for LiDAR, we obtain almost a full coverage of the area in the seafloor in that case. So we can obtain several points per square meters. The main difference between multi-beam echo sounding datasets and LiDAR datasets are that if we have multi-beam echo sounding, we usually have much more noise, especially if the conditions at sea were not very good, for example, if there were big waves. You can see here a typical uh, result of a seabed surface that was collected from multi-beam echo sounding. Notice that there's a lot of waves in, or oscillating patterns in the seabed. These are either caused by uh, wrong correction of the raw data or simply because the seabed was actually like this. The problem we're tackling in this lesson is how to automatically generate ISO contours or depth contours from multi-beam echo sounding data. First, notice in this ENC from Louisiana in the United States how the depth contours are smooth and sparse and therefore very readable. This is because they've been most likely drawn by hand by a skilled hydrographer. Indeed, even nowadays with terabytes of data and very powerful computers, the depth contours and the ENC in general are still very often drawn by hand. Notice the difference here between the contours that are generated directly from the raw multi-beam eco-sounding data on the top left and for the same area, we have the contours that were drawn manually or semi-manually by a skilled hydrographer. Notice how the contour lines on the top left are zigzagging. This is caused by a sea surface um, where the slope is changing abruptly. So it means that there are waves, as we've seen previously. And notice also how there are many island contours. These are caused by local maxima and local minima on the surface. On the right, you can see what the hydrographer drew by hand, and you can see that the contour lines are smoother, so they're less zigzagging, but also several of the local maxima and minima have disappeared since they've been aggregated into larger uh, areas that are represented by rather smooth uh, ISO contours. We describe in the book the different methods that users use in practice to deal with many depth samples. Since there's too many of them, they usually simply generalize and get rid of many points, and then they generate the contours from this subset. However, while this helps, it also creates contours that are not smooth. See one real example here. Notice that we can almost see some of the large triangles. Also, as explained in the book, most of the simplification methods will yield a surface that does not respect the safety constraint. Put simply, the safety constraint says that at every location, the indicated depth must not be deeper than the depth that was originally measured at that location. This is to guarantee that a ship never runs aground because of a faulty map. The methodology I present here is called a Voronoi-based surface approach, and it's based on several algorithms and data structures that we've covered in the book so far. 
the workflow looks like this. The key idea behind the method is to have one single consistent representation of the seafloor from which contours can be generated on the fly. Instead of performing generalization by moving lines or using a subset of the original samples, we include all the multi-beam echo sounding points in a triangulation, and we call that the surface. This surface is represented by a Delaunay triangulation, and we use the Vorner diagram implicitly to perform operations uh, on the surface, for example, uh, interpolation, and we use the Laplace uh, interpolation for this. And we have two operators that allow us to manipulate the surface to obtain contour lines that are smooth and also to remove local maxima and local minima. These operators that are called the smoothing and the densification operators are performed directly on the surface, so directly on the tin. Only when we are happy with the surface that we have can we extract the depth contour that are then shown to the users. The smoothing operator reduces the number of local minima and maxima in the surface and it does that by estimating the depth of each vertex in a dataset by considering its natural neighbors. As you can see here, uh, for a profile view of a given seafloor, we visit every vertex, and then with the help of the Laplace interpolation, we estimate what is the depth of that vertex only by considering its neighbors. If the new depth is shallower than the original depth, then this vertex is assigned uh, this value. And if it's deeper, then nothing is done because it would violate the safety constraint. The objective of the densification operator is to minimize the discretization error between the Laplace interpolated field and the contours that are extracted from the surface, which is the Delaunay triangulation. We do this by inserting extra vertices and large triangles to break them into three new triangles. As a result, the extracted contour lines have a smoother appearance because they also have a shorter line segments. We insert a new vertex at the center of the circumcircle of any triangle that has an area that is greater than the preset threshold, and the depth is assigned all the time with the Laplace interpolant. Observe the results we obtain only by using the densification operator for a synthetic dataset, a simple pyramid having a base at an elevation of 5 and its apex at an elevation of 10. Notice that by adding iteratively, so doing several passes over the triangle, so doing several passes of the densification, we obtain contours that are way smoother than the original ones. Let's have a brief look at what this methodology produces for a multi-beam echo-sounding dataset in Zeeland, the Netherlands. The dataset has about 100,000 points and covers uh, about a third of a square kilometer. First, you can see here the raw and ungeneralized contours. Uh, these were created uh, by extracting directly from the Delaunay tin of all the uh, original point samples. So if you see here, the contours have a very irregular and cluttered appearance. Now if you see here, uh, this is the result after applying the smoothing operators a uh, hundred times. So we went over a hundred times and visited all the vertices. Uh, you can notice that the resulting contours have a much more cleaner and less cluttered appearance. Notice also how the island contours are aggregated at some locations that we show with the circles and also how smoother in general the ISO contours are. While the original map was barely readable, at least for me, with the simplified and generalized map it's very easy for a human to make sense of the morphology of the, the seafloor. And finally, we can see here the effect of the smoothing operator on one ISO contour. So for this single ISO contour, we apply the smoothing operator 30 times and every color represents one pass of the smoothing operator. It's clear from this that the contour line moves towards the inner region at each pass and this is normal because this is the deeper side of the contour. 
Observe also how the line is simplified and omits at every pass more and more details. Thank you.